James Patterson was rightly pointing out that Anthony Albanese's new immigration minister, um, Tony Burke, who, by the way, happens to have the highest um, Muslim um, immigrant um, population electorate in the country, he's not a fit pick. And this is actually some of the um, attacks that both him and the prime minister had um, for um, exactly uh, what um, the opposition were criticising him for. To do is to be negative and oppose everything. It's about time James Patterson stood up for the Australian national interest instead of uh, just playing politics. Yet James Patterson is the one who is clear-eyed when it comes to national security, not Albanese. Tony Burke dutifully followed Albanese by ripping into Patterson this morning, even though it's his own record as Immigration Minister that's now under question. Can I just say, what an idiotic comment from somebody who's clearly never been a minister and has, like, he's, he's made up a, a way of looking at statistics about me. If that's the character of my shadow, then, yeah, we'll just, we'll just deal with what comes at us. I have never hesitated to reject visas or to cancel visas. He, he'll probably never refer to that statistic because uh, the, it's... It's just irrefutable if you if you go back through the records as what I what I did last time, and the sort of decisions that will happen under my watch again. And here comes the fact. Well, check. I asked James Patterson to respond to these attacks from Albanese and Tony Burke today, and he told me, "I understand why the Prime Minister and Tony Burke are sensitive. I'd be embarrassed too with that record." Burke let in 83 boats carrying 6,600 illegal arrivals in just 80 days as Immigration Minister. Children in detention peaked at 1,992 on his watch. But Australians are entitled to expect a Prime Minister and Minister for Home Affairs who are calm and measured, not who resort to unhinged rants when their record is scrutinised. All right, Ben, shoot. <laughs> Well, it's just projection by uh, Tony Burke, isn't it? Um, and this is a classic thing that Labor always do. They project their failures, they project their um, inadequacies on somebody who's highly competent you know, as their opposition and can actually do the job. I mean, and James Patterson just come in and, you know, um, ruin, wrecked him. He just come in and wrecked him with the facts. I mean, uh, if you look at what they had to do is sack two complete duds as... Um, uh, uh, who are who are ministers who couldn't even do their jobs and should never have been in the portfolios in the first place, and they've actually then put in someone else who's really only there. I mean, what, one of the things that uh, you know James Patterson was questioning is how many of these Palestinians who are fleeing uh, the conflict over there, mm. how many of them are you going to let in mm. and have no security screening or processes for? and flood them into the community. Which electorate do you think he's going to put them in? He's going to put them in his own because he's trying to win the favour of the upset uh, large Muslim community there that are not happy with how um, the handling of the conflict over there has been done. And obviously there are Palestinian people who live there. There are people there of Arab background who um, sympathise with what's going on over there. Um, rightfully so. I mean, it's um, it's a horrible war and, you know, anyone who's opposing war, you know, look, it's not a, not a bad thing to oppose war, believe me, but what we see from Tony Burke, the whole reason they've put him there as immigration minister is because, yes, he is going to flood. That's exactly what they're going to do. I oh, see, look at us, we, we helped out the Palestinians, we brought them all in and put them in the electorate. He's just trying to save his own skin because he's very concerned about the Islamic backlash from the Islamic community in his own electorate, mm. as all the Labor MPs are. But I speak to people in these communities, and they tell me, we're all voting Greens. All the, all the mm. Muslims are saying, we're voting Greens. Why are you voting Greens for? They're the only ones who stood up in Parliament and they called it out. And so this is what the, these Labor Party stooges at headquarters, they think, oh, we're going to change it. You know, we're going to... We're going to, this is our new game plan to you know, get back in the green books with the Muslims just so they vote for us, and then we'll just treat them like garbage again for the next three years. Um, they, 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 they've they dropped the eight ball here. They don't understand how big this issue has gotten. And if we look at James Patterson's record, James Patterson has done a tremendous job um, in opposition, and he is held to account. Um, he held to account Claire O'Neill numerous, numerous times. And... He's, he's a guy of a high calibre who potentially, if he was in the lower house, he could be the Prime Minister one day, mm. you know? And this is the kind of thing that, if you, that you see. He comes out and does his job and calls out in opposition um, an incompetent minister who's just been... Two incompetent ministers who've been removed and then replaced with another minister who's already failed previously in that portfolio. And what I find astonishing about that is then they have the audacity to project and 
uh, try and bring it down, which again, it just goes back to, you know, they feel threatened. Mm. And that's why they're actually doing it because they're so, they're so frightened that they got caught out. And we saw it too. And you, you see this kind of fear from Labor. They, they talk the talk and they get up and say all the lovey-dovey stuff and, and try and project that, you know, their opposition to failures and all that sort of stuff. And then you see in the budget reply speech, Peter Dutton get up and just talk real talk. And you saw the fear on Albanese's face. You saw the fear on that whole front bench. And it was real fear. They were like, oh, no, he's going to get up there and he's going to own us. And that's exactly what happened there. Hmm. There you go. Couldn't I couldn't say it better than uh, that, guys. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there because you guys do have a long, long drive tonight. And I really do appreciate you guys coming out, um, especially on short, relatively short notice. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to follow any of the guests that are on this panel... These clips will be made available during the week, but you can click the link in the description. I have all the links there with regards to uh, Rumble, YouTube, with regards to um, all the other um, social media accounts that I've got, but also these phenomenal panelists uh, that have been uh, kind enough to lend us their time. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Give this a share. If you want to um, join the army that's actually donating a, a cup of coffee every month um, to this, please scan that QR code. There's an opportunity to donate as well. And I've got some very exciting um, announcements coming uh, in the next few days. I'm excited to share with you guys. But um, without further ado, guys, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your insights. I do want to do some dedicated podcast with you guys on local councils and i want to do one definitely with you um on um uh, ben on the uh, defense of australia and go a lot deeper with perhaps some people to go through the uh, national strategic review and Stephen, we've got to do the, the fourth turning at some point i have just finished a phenomenal podcast on that you've been reading the book i've got to read the book but um i think uh, as a historian you've got a lot to um to weigh in on that absolutely can't wait excellent all right guys is there anything you wanted to plug before i, I turn off these cameras Oh, definitely. If you're in Cessnock, vote independent come 14th of September. Amen. Amen. Good old, People God bless over you, politics. God bless you, Quentin. Thank you, Christine. God bless thank you. you. Thanks, Thank, thank you. No, thank it's you. my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks for no, Absolutely. Us. Ben, thank you so thank much. You. Thanks Excellent. for having us. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. All right. I'll see you guys later. God bless you. Have a good one. Uh, as Hoodie says, stay out of the trees. And um, I'll, I'll be back with uh, episode 11 this time next week. Have a good one.